Jeffrey walks into the school canteen. Oh, why is everyone watching me? They're all looking at me. What are they thinking? Are they judging me? He starts over analyzing every move and spends the rest of the day feeling awkward. If only he could feel more confident. Adonis. Adonis steps into a room of people entering a social flow state immediately and he engages in a present, loving, vibrant conversation. He displays his charisma and never feels awkward. Why? Because Adonis has followed these principles of confidence. I was a pretty confident and loud kid growing up, you know, when I'm 10, 12, 13 years old. But when I got to about 15, 16 years old, I gained some weight and I got kind of chubby. Like I wasn't like fat, fat, but I got kind of chubby and previously being skinny all my life and being, you know, a kid who used to like playing sports with other friends and suddenly just becoming like a full-time video gamer and just eating shit food. That was the first time in my life where I truly lacked confidence. And it's not a good experience for young men. You've heard so much, you know, you've watched so many of these videos telling you how important confidence is for young men and, you know, we should try and be more confident. It's no surprise of how important this is because confidence leads to you actually being able to enjoy life and not feeling awkward or shy or scared of things like social interaction with other people. Being confident around other people means that you can enjoy the most important part of life, which is relationships. So ask yourself this question right now. How confident are you? And don't sugarcoat it. Don't lie. Ask yourself the true, honest question. How confident are you? How much do you overanalyze everything you do? When you're in a social setting, do you feel awkward with your hands? Like you don't know what to do with your hands. Do you put them in your pocket? Do you put the thumbs out of your pocket? Do you only put the thumb in your pocket and your fingers out? Like so many guys feel awkward in their own bodies and like they don't even hold eye contact. Someone will be speaking to them and they'll be like almost looking away from them with some weird social mannerisms. If you implement just a handful of these ways to become more confident you're going to see a difference in your life but if you implement almost all of them your life is going to change number one go to the gym and lift weights now going to the gym and getting onto the cardio machines like the treadmill or the exercise bike can be nice there's so many benefits to doing cardio but the real benefit of going to the gym for young men is going to the weight section and doing weightlifting so that you start building muscle because when a young man builds muscle his confidence just skyrockets you actually start to feel like a man and it's the act of lifting some heavy ass weight you know pressing it and like grunting and stuff that just makes you feel so much more confident. And so the second way to be confident after you've just finished your weightlifting session is to then do some cardio. Now, so many guys who already go to the gym and lift some weights who have got, you know, this bodybuilder, weightlifter identity, skip cardio because it's just a bit tiring and you'd rather just go home. But the importance of cardio is huge, especially if you do the best kind of cardio, which is number three, fighting. Get into fighting, get into MMA, get into boxing, kickboxing, Muay Thai, BJJ, get into some kind of martial arts because that counts as your cardio session for the day. But then you also get this huge benefit of being a fighter when you as a young recluse guy start punching a bag and actually get good at this sport of being able to fight and hit people your confidence skyrockets i saw this in myself when i joined kickboxing just over a year ago and suddenly like i actually feel confident in my own body now and i actually feel like a little bit deadly and i see this in my right hand man my best friend sam who has been like a little video gamer jeffrey for all of his life and suddenly he's going to like muay thai with me he's doing mma and i'm seeing him actually get like more confident like he's not good i'm not gonna lie he's not very good on like the bags or anything but he's improving as a man you need to have some kind of like physical a little bit of like violence in your life and we don't want this with other people we don't want to get into like dangerous fights with crackheads or something but just go into like a bag and just hitting it and actually getting better at it skyrockets your confidence number four eat clean eating a dirty junk food diet of like you know the western food that a lot of people eat burgers and pizzas it tastes awesome honestly it tastes so fucking good but it makes you feel like shit i want you to just visualize this imagine you've got like some social event coming up and imagine two realities one where you eat some like dirty junk food that you know is not good for you or one one that you eat like this ultra healthy like this amazing diet which doesn't taste as nice okay you go through eating the meal how are you gonna feel there and then when you go into the social setting physically you're gonna feel worse if you ate the junk food maybe like your stomach's getting a bit like churny you almost need like some liquid shits because you've just had some like kfc or some shit but even mentally psychologically you're gonna feel more proud of yourself because you know that you've done the right thing when you've ate clean on the other hand you might lose a little bit of confidence because you've ate some shit food that you know wasn't really part of your goals number five get a hobby and actually be good at it now this could be weight lifting, you know, going to the gym, or it could be MMA or, you know, martial arts, so that's awesome. But if it's not one of those, choose a new hobby that you could get really good at and maybe even see if you can turn that into a viable business. YouTube for me to begin with was always going to be a hobby. Like I literally just posted videos when I was 13 years old about me playing on Minecraft and stuff. And it was always just a hobby and I got good at it. And that led to this moment now where I'm doing it full time as like, not just a business, a successful business, but as a global movement. Choose one thing. It may be, you know, something fitness related, or it may be something like business related or whatever it is. Choose a 
hobby and really commit yourself to getting really good at it. And I don't just mean show up to the thing and just do the thing. I mean, honestly, be obsessed with the thing so much that even in your free time, you're reading books on it. Even in your free time, you're watching YouTube videos on how to do it better. My first thing that I got good at was weightlifting. I started weightlifting, you know, bodybuilding, wanting to build muscle. And in my free time, I'd literally just watch YouTube videos on like how to build muscle faster. Like the top seven best bicep exercises. Number five, and again, related to the first point that we made, be the most in shape guy in the room. So just going to the gym and lifting some weights is really nice. But once you've gotten the progress from that, and you also literally are the most muscular, and most lean guy in the room, you automatically become one of the most confident guys there. There's just something about being in a better athletic shape than another man. It's purely magical. Number seven, and one that I would probably benefit from implementing myself, be the best dressed guy in the room. So we've already discussed how you look naked, essentially, you know, how your body looks. Now, obviously, we've got to put some clothes on when we go into public. Yeah, I know, it's weird, isn't it? Can't just wear bathrobes everywhere. But when you're the best dressed guy in the room and you have the nicest, cleanest clothes, and I'm not talking about some expensive, like, designer shit that's, like, you know, really a rip-off or something. I'm just saying, like, you've got the smartest clothes on. So if it's somewhat of, like, a formal thing that you're going to, don't wear a fucking full suit or anything. But, like, you know, just wear some, like, smart, maybe tailored, maybe, you know, like, some nice fitting clothes. If you're, for example, you go into the gym, you've got some, like, nice gym clothes, you're not wearing, like, the sweaty bodybuilder you see in your gym always wears, which is, like, those, like, thick ass fucking boot cut joggers with like dirty trainers like this is the shit i used to wear right and when you don't care about what you look yeah it's kind of cool like, oh yeah i don't care what anyone thinks of me the truth is bro to feel more confident you do care what people think about you honestly there's nothing wrong with that it's completely normal in our animalistic evolution to care about what people in our tribe think about us it's completely normal it's a good thing and so there's been times when for example i go to the gym just wearing like old tatted up shirts and pants and stuff and i don't feel confident honestly in those moments i kind of hope that no one talks to me that's not reeking confidence is it but whereas when you go with like a nice like i'm not saying they buy expensive shit but when you go in like a nice gym set with like clean trainers you just feel like oh yeah like you could be a bit more receptive to like the social situation there when you step out of your house and you're not dressed nicely and you wear like some clothes that you know doesn't look good maybe you even go as far as wearing clothes that aren't even clean when you go outside you kind of wish no one even looks at you don't you that's a lack of confidence whereas when you go outside and you know that you look good you smell good you want people to come up and talk to you you want to meet like your crush that day don't you you should literally get dressed and step out of your house in a way where you expect to like walk past your crush every single day so if you've got some fucking stain on your shirt and you're like oh no, it's only small no one's gonna see it bro come on number eight make money and become more successful so depending on where you are in life right now this could be maybe studying even better and getting higher grades or it could be like really working hard in your career so that you get another promotion or you get more eligible for a different job or really working hard on your business or a new thing to like actually go and make some money now there is a moment of confidence for all young men bro honestly it comes down to entrepreneurship there's guys out there who really like don't like the idea of business and they just want to make like a full-time job yeah it's sweet but just making your own like money like your own first dollar through your own thing no boss has paid you that like you made your own thing you sold your own product and you get your first sale it's a deeply confidence invoking thing and then when you get good at that business that you've just created and you start to make good money from it you can't help but feel so totally confident when i tell people about how much i make i can't help but feel like a fucking superstar when i tell them that my monthly income is more than what most people make per year and this isn't for me degrading anyone else but it's for me picking myself up and often you know with some pussies out there you can't really talk about your success like there might be someone who's watching this right now who's just got offended and insulted at what I just said and said like, yeah, Hamza's a dumbass. Like, oh, he doesn't realize that not everyone can be an entrepreneur and all this shit. The truth is, once you become successful, you become confident as fuck and you start to realize like there are some people out there who don't even want to see you confident and successful. Some people just hear like a man talk about his success and they just want to chat shit and we don't want to be friends with those kinds of people. Number nine, don't be ultra careful of potentially offending people all the time. Now, there's some people who never, ever, ever want to go through the risk of annoying someone, of offending them of saying something wrong of you know playing it too safe when it comes to saying things to other people being too nice with that comes a lack of confidence because then you're always tiptoeing around a potential issue if you're one of those people who always hates conflict and you really really hate like arguments and you know even like critical comments and just trying to solve a problem you really find that weird and you know it makes you feel bad well then you're going to get more confidence if you actually start to train yourself to feel okay with having some kind of conflict with someone now of course never get into like violent situations but sometimes it's necessary to have like a little bit of conflict with like a co worker or maybe someone who's in your school who's like bullying you. Sometimes it's needed to speak up and say something that might piss them off. Once you start to accept that and actually start to push for it yourself, you'll feel more confidence. Number 10, practice your social skills. And this is so needed. Your social skills and your mannerisms when you're in a social setting are so crucial to your confidence. If you feel like you've said the wrong thing to some friends or, you know, some girl or some social group, or if you feel like you're awkward, if you feel like you don't know what to do with your hands and all this shit, bro, you're not going to feel confident if you do that. When you have read some good social skills books, like the book I always keep around me, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And you've really tried to implement this book so many times. The best way, by the way, to implement this book is literally just get this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, read it, 
and then just go into our Discord server, which is linked below. And there's always a video call running with another young man who's on self-improvement. Read a principle of this. It says, oh, like, remember to take an interest in them and ask them questions. You read that and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to ask them questions. You join our Discord server. There's always a video call running. You join the video call and you remember the principle that you've just learned. Okay, ask him questions. And you end up asking this guy questions and your social skills drastically improve compared to the guy who just reads the book, who's a nerd, never even implements it. If you're just reading books and not implementing them like this way, you're probably not going to be learning. There is such a powerful, fast, easy, free way for you to level up your social skills. Just read a book like this and go implement it straight away in our Discord server. And even the best way, if you don't even want to read the book, I literally have a video that will have pop up as a card and a link in the description where I went through this entire book and went through every single principle of social success and explain it to you in a video. So you can just watch that every principle, stop the video, go into our Discord server, hop into a video call, use the principle right there, bro. There's literally like 50 guys at any given time doing this. And it's so amazing to see so many of your guys improve their social skills. And with that, you just become so much more confident. Following on from that, the 11th way to become more confident is using those social skills to make friends. Once you've made some friends, and they don't have to be like ultra serious long-term friends, but if you have some friendly people in the environment that you go in, like for example, the gym or in school or in work or a martial arts club or any other place that you often go to, if you've got some friendly faces there, it just makes you feel so much nicer. Now imagine the guy who walks into the gym, doesn't know anyone there, keeps his head down, you know, he's got his headphones in. Is he going to feel very confident? Probably not. But then imagine the guy who goes into the gym, the same gym as always, and he knows so many guys there that he's walking up, like handshaking everyone, fist bumping and everything, having a little conversation, and then he's going to start his workout. He's going to feel so much more confident because he feels like he has friends in this environment where the other guy feels like everyone here is like neutral or even foes. I totally experienced this myself when I told you about that gym that I signed up to in my hometown. This fancy gym that I signed up to is like $150 a month. And I went there and made so many friends that anytime I'd go for a session, there'd be a few people that I'd already previously spoke to, if not some like of my good friends. And I'd have so many people to talk to that like this gym felt like it was mine. Number 12, have a good relationship with your family. Having a strong family support system can be incredibly valuable and make you feel more confident. No matter what's happened to me and my family, like I always knew that they were there for me. And this meant that through some times when I wasn't doing so well, I always knew that I had my family to rely on. Like worst case scenario, let's say everything messes up right now. Let's say I become disabled. I can't even work anymore. I still know I can go to my family's home there. That gives me like a level of like confidence and safety that I have this support system. And so the thing that you could do right now, which I'm a big advocate of, is try to improve your family's relationships through gratitude. If there's one way that I've personally found that I've put so many guys onto improving their family's relationships, the only thing that's ever worked, and it's going to seem weird, this is so interesting, the only thing that ever works to improve like a family that's always been kind of toxic and abusive with each other is gratitude. Everything else, which is like, oh yeah, I'll make some money and I'll get away from my family, doesn't work. Like, yeah, you can try it and it'll be nice, you know, get your own space, but then you'll look back at your family, you know, you'll eventually speak to them and you'll just see that your mom has literally aged, your dad has aged, they look older and you'll feel fucking horrible doing that. Getting distance away from your family doesn't work. Doing all of these things does not work. The one thing that works to improve your family's relationship is gratitude. You start to write down every single day, five to 10 things that you're grateful for each member of your family. If it has to take you an hour to sit there and think about it, so be it. You do this for a couple of days, your relationship with your family will just improve because you actually start to be grateful for them. And if you go to the extent of actually telling them what you're grateful for, your relationship with them changes forever. I'll say this with firsthand experience. And when that happens, you can't help but feel like an extra level of security and confidence because now you have this support system that's supposed to be there for you. You know, you can always lose friends, you can always lose partners and relationships, but no one can really lose their family. Like that bloodline is always there. And I think it's valuable to cultivate that. I'm very glad for Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate for coming up, getting so viral and showing us all the value of brotherhood. But having said that, the 13th way that we're going to discuss to improve your confidence is to not listen to your parents 100% of the time. This can seem a little bit negative and it might seem weird and there might be some parents watching this thinking, wait, I don't want my son to listen to this. Bang on. Most parents want the best for their children, but the best for their children, the perception of what is the best for them in their own parents' brain is usually not actually objectively what is the universal truth of what is best for them. Does this make sense? So a parent may have the thought he wants what's best for his child, but he may not even know objectively what that is. He thinks that it's going to university and becoming a doctor, whereas what might have been best for that child is doing something completely different. But the parent doesn't really know that because he's blinded by his own biases of what may have been best for him when he was younger. So I'm not saying to defy your parents, but there may be some times that you actually know better than your parents do. And this was the case for me when I decided to become a YouTuber. So really, my parents didn't like ever push me away and said, no, be a doctor or something, but they did push me to go to university. And in the end, everything worked fine. I went to university. I didn't study. I was a shit student, but I used the time in university to cultivate experiences of focusing on building muscle, getting girls, making friends. And now I'm like 10 times more successful than everyone who actually studied. So 
you know, I made university work in a way that shouldn't have worked, but it was the wrong decision to go. It potentially could have been like the 99% of young guys who end up going to university because their parents kind of just made them and they end up having a shit time there. They don't even get a good degree or anything and it could have went a lot wronger. Make sure that if your parents are recommending you to do something and you know, they're adamant, okay, you go to university or you get this job or you do this. If you are certain that that's not the way for you, try to figure out a way that you can explain to them in the best way. Like it's hard to say, man, because every parent is kind of unique and explaining to one parent works, whereas explaining to a different one doesn't. And so chances are you've probably already tried to explain to them, oh, yeah, yeah, but father, university is a fucking scam and the education system is a joke. That's the truth. That's the universal truth of the world. But obviously parents think like, oh, well, you know, like when I was growing up, the person who did really well in school became a doctor and his life was really good. It was a lot better than mine. But what they don't see is that that doctor is depressed as fucking suicidal because he has to work 80 hour weeks. The 14th way to become more confident. Stop being a dickhead who argues on the internet. I have to use that fucking swear word, bro. Only people who argue on the internet in tweets and YouTube comments, they're full on dickheads. They're full on like actual idiots. If you've ever spent your time arguing in like some internet little debate or something, like there's a difference between, yeah, like, you know, exchanging ideas and whatever, okay. But there's people who literally will just scroll and like waste time in comments arguing with each other and it makes no sense. If you're a confident man of value, you don't spend your time doing that. When you partake in internet arguments, you know, someone's triggered you on Twitter or some shit. What's actually happening is that you're convincing yourself that your time isn't valuable. And I'm guilty of this myself. Sometimes it's like my brain is prone to this. There'll be someone chatting shit on YouTube or on Discord and I end up getting all triggered and shit and I'll be writing a massive message back. Usually I'll stop myself. Sometimes I'll actually post a comment and just regret it later. But usually I'll just be sat there like, hang on, like my time is worth like 3,000 pounds per hour. I've just been typing this message for 10 minutes. I've literally just lost 500 pounds of my time by speaking to this dumbass. And finally, the 15th easy way to become more confident, which is my all time favorite, set goals, become ambitious. I am well and truly a goal setter. This space you've seen that I've dominated, the self-improvement productivity space. It was kind of like a joke before I started. No one was taking self-improvement seriously. You saw all the guys previously, it's like no one was taking them seriously. It's like, you can't talk about fucking self-improvement if you're not jacked, bro. That's my quote, right? Obviously, you can't talk about self-improvement and productivity. If you don't go to the gym, shut the fuck up. So this entire space was a joke, right? I came in and the one thing I got known for straight away was setting ambitious goals that a lot of people didn't believe me with. And now people realize when I tell people my goals now, like on YouTube, people automatically believe me, even though it sounds silly because I've proven time and time again that whatever goal I set, I achieve. I publicly post my goals onto YouTube and you can go and see that every goal that I've mentioned before, like most of them, there's been fused that like I've set a goal. It was a stupid goal that I set though, so I had to change it. But with all the serious long-term goals that I've set, we've hit them exactly when I say we would. It is currently the 4th of December, 2022. I said that over this month, we will eventually hit 1.5 million subs. We will hit exactly that. I said that we would hit 1 million in October. We hit 1 million in October. I said that we would hit 500K subs in July. We hit 500K in June. And I set these goals over a year ago when we had like 50,000 subscribers. And for income, exactly one year ago in December, 2021, I was live streaming as I am right now. And I told people that one year from then in December, 2022, we would have our first 100,000 pounds month. That over the course of this month of December, we would make 100,000 pounds of just this month. And I remember the chat of the live stream literally starts spamming like, yeah, yeah, cap, cap, L, whatever. Well, actually it's going to be more like 175,000 for this month. And so when I tell you that in 2023 over December, we're going to make over 1 million pounds in income, you should believe me. And also in that month, we will hit 5 million subscribers. Everyone believes me when I set goals now because I have a track record of hitting them. But imagine how this makes me feel. Imagine that I can look directly at you, know that 100,000, 200,000 people will watch this video and tell 200,000 people exactly what I will achieve a year from now. Imagine that level of accountability. Imagine how silly I'm going to look if I don't achieve that now. So I feel confident in myself by setting these ambitious goals. Click and watch this video right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.